the image which is behind me. Yes. That's not Italiano. Yes, that's Italiano at the is, top. I don't mm -hmm. know why I thought it was the La Rapio. La Rapio? No, it's not La Rapio. Because on your website, it was clearly, um, I was just, I've, I've combed your website many times and I was just oh. on there and I was Thank looking you. at, oh my God, which one was it? It's just so amazing. Do I still have it? <laughs> oh my God, hold on just a second. It's, um, oh, it's, let me just bring up the name of it. Come on. For some reason, it's not showing me. Oh, it's because I'm getting this, this spinning kaleidoscope of death. Um, <laughs> the the here of go. death. It's, um, <laughs> and of course, I can't see without my reading glasses. Right. La, 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 la oh, it, that, maybe that's why I had that on. Oh, my God. It's just. Thank you. Thank you. As soon as you snapped that shot, did you take a series like right, like one after another to get that, or did you know when you shot that? No, I I, I knew. You know, for a long time, um, especially just starting out, that way back in two thousand six, two thousand five, two thousand six, when Dominique and Deborah Barbier first invited me to come out to the farm to make photographs for the new edition of Dressage for the New Age. That would have been the third edition at that time. Um, I had to learn how to really time what I was doing. You know, I, um, the the cameras were great back then. I had a top of the line Canon camera and a, and a great, you know, super sharp glass, but they weren't fast. And so you you really had to be with the horse and be feeling yeah. him or her at that time to get the best shot that you could. And I've tried to make myself just continue that practice ever since because really it doesn't force me. It encourages me to be really in tune with what's going on in front of me and what I'm feeling in that time. And so it was, it was a good learning experience. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But wow. Larapio is a special horse. I mean, he really was, uh, he's, he's passed now, but he was so giving of himself, of everything that was inside of him and so i always enjoyed photographing him so thank you for that oh it's just like <laughs> yeah okay all right i'm gonna get started okay. and anything if i bumble over my words i might start the question over again and lisa can edit anything out okay so and again i just i'm not worried <laughs> When Lisa asked me, I'm like, to do this, I'm like, really? All right, we'll get started. Hi, this is Lisa Mae DeMacy with another Equus Film Festival web chat, here with Karen Silas, whose compelling images capture the spirit of the Lusitano horse. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Lisa. What a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. Karen. Over 11 years, you photographed Lusitanos on three continents mm -hmm. and say if you haven't captured the full expression of the horse's soul, the photograph isn't successful. How can you tell when you fully captured your subject spirit? Oh, that's such a great question. Uh, the first thing is that I get goosebumps. <laughs> and the second, uh, when I go back, uh, so we photographers do this thing called chimping the screen. If we think we have something really good, or if we have a question, if we're off on our settings or what have you, you know, we're, we'll look at the screen. Um, much less these days than I used to. But if I think I've captured something really special, then after the moment is passed, and I, and I do mean, you know, a little while, because you really need to stay with the horse. You need to stay connected to him. But I'll go back and check. I, I'm guilty of that. But if then when I see the same thing, or I should say when I feel the same thing, when I'm editing, then I know I've created something that speaks not only to me, but has the possibility to speak to many other people, whether they love the Lusitano or not, or whether they're just general horse lovers. I want that, ex that full expression of who that horse is to come through my photograph. Thank you. Well said. Mm -hmm. uh, your festival entry is Italiano du top. Is du top. That mm -hmm. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Yes, the 
um, the photograph of Italiano happened after I was finished photographing him. He had been down in the arena with me. This was in Brazil, uh, outside of Sao Paulo, at Manège Santa Adelaide with my dear, dear friend, Davi Carano. And we had been photographing Italiano, it was his horse. And I was okay with some things that I had gotten. You know, I, I try not to be too greedy. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's not a good feeling. And as we were walking back up to the barn, we passed the wash stall. And it was a lightly overcast day, and the wash stall was an outdoor stall, uh, well-used, old concrete enclosure, just enclosed on three sides with no roof. And I looked at the background and I said, oh, Davi, we have to put him in the wash stall because the coloring of that wash stall with that soft, almost Venetian green kind of color with his beautiful Palomino coat and his little beach waves and things happening mm -hmm. there. It was, it was everything I possibly have wanted. It's the most beautiful studio painted backdrop that you could imagine and it just happened to be there. But the lighting had everything to do with it because it mm -hmm. was soft, because it was overcast, no hard shadows, nothing you know blasting onto the horse. Then I was able to make the image. Wow. So, then I was really happy. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. it's yeah. just gorgeous. Thank you. Um, you've been taking images of Lusitanos, um, excuse me, you began taking images of Lusitanos in 2005 after a career in the printing and binding industry. Yes. Could, could you describe the moment when you decided to pursue taking images of the Lusitanos? Yes, I can, but it's going, to, it's going to slide a little bit away from the horses, but it's a really funny story. So um, I, I have taken two photo workshops in my life. Okay, uh, the first one was a disaster that had marvelous consequences. And the second one was a photo workshop that changed my life. And that was in the fall of 2005. And because I was such a young photographer and um, just eager, okay, but not in an egotistical way, I asked the instructor who was a world famous photographer if I had enough talent to make my living as a photographer. And he said, well, you know, do you, do you really have to make money from it? I, I, there are a lot of photographers out there that work who have other sources of income. And I said, no, I would have to make money. <laughs> I'd have to feed myself from it. <laughs> and he said, mm, no. And I thought, okay. So I spent all of 2006 turning myself into a good enough photographer. And at the end of 2006, I got a dream job. And well, I've just been going ever since then. So that was the moment that it happened. It was actually that moment when he said, no, because I love a challenge. And so here we are today. And we laugh about it. I continue to teach with him uh, every year. Oh. And it's a, it's a great story for the workshop or whoever is in it and, you know, to encourage other students. Of so. course. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, in recent years, your project, have, your part, excuse me, your projects have included a collection of your photographs in the book, Lusitano, Noble, Courageous, Eternal. Yes. Crafted the uniquely gorgeous fine press edition book, Cavallo Lusitano, which mm -hmm. won first place in the Art Intersections Light Sensitive Awards yes. and collaborated with world renowned horseman, Dominique Fabier and two other publications. Yes, actually three now, but yes, who's yeah. counting? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a current project you're working on or one that you feel most passionate about? Well, when I'm able, I have some ideas about uh, doing some more coursework that I'm really anxious to get out there and do. Um, with, uh, I want to investigate photographing the horses through kind of gauzy, ethereal veils, if you will. Um, it's a little bit difficult to describe a visual thing, just using words, but uh, I've been inspired by the work of Elizabeth Opelenik, who photographs the female form, and she uses swimming pools and veils and all kinds of wraps and things like that, and I want to work intimately with the horse in this manner, not in a swimming pool, but in, in other ways. So I've got some, some figuring out how to do that. 
Um, but at the same time, I'm also involved in another project that's been very dear to me, uh, titled Loss and Beauty. And again, nothing to do with horses this time, but none of us is a one-dimensional being. And I have other photo projects that keep me going. And Loss and Beauty is something that I've been working on since 2011 and uh, was published and has won a number of international awards. And so now I'm working on part two. But I have a lot of work to do for Cavallo Lusitano to get it out to the public, even though it's an incredibly limited edition. Um, those books like that just don't fly off the shelf. So I have a lot of work to do and it's very difficult in this time of COVID to do it. But I'm very happy to say that I've just been um, notified that it's won two more international awards. And to have that happen and to wow. be amongst the company that I'm in with that book, it's, it's just, it's an amazing feeling. And, and for me, the, the feeling that's strongest is pride and gratitude for the team that put this work together because as you know the box is handmade and all of the prints are hand printed they're platinum palladium the paper is handmade the letterpress is done page by page by page one off there, there's this beautiful piece of felt in the book that cradles the two the portfolio and the book itself i mean i could just go on about all of the effort that we made to have this be a completely tactile experience and now that team is being awarded handsomely and that is thrilling to me yeah it's a masterpiece um Thanks. i watched the video it, it, charlie wait is that is yes that? yes my good friend and colleague yes oh i i watched it from beginning to end like five times because oh, of thank all you. The, just the detail just, just the story behind how you put that together in all the different people and how the book went all over the world that get, yes. get the signatures. That's just the best part of the whole thing. And isn't it amazing? When I left the printing and binding industry, I, I left it and closed the door and said, no more, because it's a very high stress industry. But now we come full circle and all of the knowledge and all of the teaching that I was had the benefit of for all of my years, more than 20 years in that industry, um, it came full circle and I could use my understanding and, and help the rest of the team understand how things needed to go together. And they didn't need my help in the end, but it was, well, it was very gratifying. Yes. Wonderful. Thank um, you. You spoke a little bit about um, doing workshops and I was wondering if you could just say a few words about your workshops and your mentoring programs. Oh, thank you, Lisa. It's, it's, um, oh gosh, it's so important to me on so many levels. Uh, being able to give back is number one for me because I have been given the benefit of an amazing education. As I said, I've only had two formal workshops in my life, but I've continued to learn from and teach with and, and keep my ears open uh, and assist some of the greatest photographers in the world. And so, when someone takes a workshop with me or decides to become one of my mentoring students, they're having all of the voices from Charlie Wade and Sam Abel and Arthur Meyerson and Jay Maisel, I mean, just the greats of the photography world, they just come right through me. And, and I try to offer all of the teaching that I've been given to my students. But particularly in this time, to be able to maintain a relationship with my students when we can't travel together, and when I can't go out to Washington State to teach or over onto the East Coast, uh, having the mentoring program that I have, where I meet once every two weeks or so with each of my students, uh, and we meet just like this in Zoom, mm -hmm. we go through their projects, we do editing, we learn new software. I mean, the, it's, it's a wide gamut of things that we can cover. And I've also introduced a new program this year called the Creative Conversation. And I have many more people that are coming together once every two weeks in a Zoom format. And sometimes I'm teaching, but most often it's someone that I want to introduce to a wider, uh, to my group of photographers, if you will, that they might not have known about, like mm -hmm. Elizabeth Ogolenik, I mentioned, Catherine Carnell, Honey Lazar, Charlie Waite, um, Sam Abel will be on later in the year, and Arthur Ryerson. And we just have a great time. They get a different perspective. We mm -hmm. see something more deeply or in a way we might not have thought of, and we all get to learn creatively. And 
that's a huge inspiration for me and I hope for my students. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank um, you. Could you tell our audience where they could find your work or learn a little bit more about you? Oh, I would love to have people visit my website, which is, it's very difficult to spell, but karenpasillas.com. Uh, it's K-E-R-O-N-P-S-I-L-L-A-S.com. Um, everything is there from all of the classes to the mentoring, all the galleries and the books, um, all kinds of information. Oh, and videos, as you mentioned. And um, yeah, and some new surprises coming up for next year as well. So that's great. That is yeah. great. It's, it's nice to hear that you're, you're doing all these different things that the panda pandemic hasn't affected you in any way. And um, Oh, it's affected us, but I mean, we've had to adapt, <laughs> but we exactly. keep moving forward. you keep moving forward. That's right. Well, you know, uh, necessity being the mother of invention, I was sitting uh, on the East Coast. I had been in Houston working and attending also a photo fest there and, and portfolio reviews. And actually I fell ill, um, oh. but I went back to the East Coast and I'm sitting there at my mom's place in West Virginia in my little Airstream. And I thought, I've got to get busy. What if I can't travel? What if all my trips get called off this year? I've got to do something. And that's when I just started the creative conversation I and uh, started pushing the online courses that I'm teaching. And so far, so good. And uh, it's also been a wonderful time for me to refine all of my thoughts and the way that I communicate my thoughts about photography with my students. And I like that very much. That's great. Thank very you. good. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I'm delighted, Lisa. You know, everyone in the organization has done a wonderful job and I can't even imagine all of the challenges that you've had to overcome. But of course, I'm there to support you. I wish you all the best. And thank you, thank you for sharing my Lusitano with the world. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Thank you. Take good care. Thank you. You too. Bye.